Ye, formerly known as Kanye West, is one of the biggest names in hip-hop, the music industry, and the celebrity world in general. His name is known by most everybody, and his music has always been cited as pushing music forwards as an art, with many awards and accolades to back this up. His career has been instrumental to so many artists learning from and being influenced by him, to the point where the genre of hip-hop would not be the same without him. With a well-respected and legendary discography, Kanye has been making music for a very long time. And alongside this, he is known for delays and inconsistency in recent releases, alongside, most importantly, his leaked and scrapped music. Kanye has many songs, and even albums that never saw the light, like Tobographic 16, So Help Me God, and the now infamous Yandy, among others. While songs from these albums have been reworked and re-released, much like how Yandy became Jesus' is King after Kanye's religious epiphany, a lot of this music remains scrapped, never to see the light of day. As we learn more and more about these scrapped songs, it's important to understand Kanye's motivations to make music that is real and honest. He says it himself best in his 2002 MTV Heard It Here First interview. I gotta talk about something from here, instead of trying to compete with him. Like, I got some songs, I got some stuff in my heart that the world need to hear. As far as his album, I feel like you're gonna get something that's truly real because if it didn't work, I could still eat off of doing beats. I want the same people that love Tribe Called Quest and Mob Deep and Nas and Jay-Z first album to hear my shit and be like, dog, that's some real shit. This ain't no just trying to be on a radio type shit. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully I get radio, I, I pray that the people love it, but this is for y'all. This is something that is very well illustrated by his most recent studio album, Donda, named after his late mother. With songs like 24 and Come to Life, showing Kanye bear it all and create music where he is vulnerable and honest with his audience. Another great example was his single, I Feel Like That, with a very on-the-nose title and lyrics describing his personal experiences and symptoms read to him from a third-person perspective, with his verse being a repetition of the phrase, I feel like that. With all of this context to Kanye's personality and character, let's go back to 2007, when Kanye's third studio album, Graduation, saw its official release. After one of the music industry's most successful two album runs, Kanye was on top of the world, and Graduation was the third and final album of the College Dropout trilogy. He sold 957,000 copies in its first week, completely obliterating his competition, namely 50 Cent, who released his album Curtis on the same day, September 11th, 2007. Outside of the releases, Kanye was engaged to Alex Pfeiffer, who he had been in an on and off relationship with since 2000 2002 and proposed to in 2006. All seemed at peace in Kanye's world, and with these classic untouchable albums, Kanye had made history, and most importantly, made his mother proud. Kanye's mother, Donda West, was the most important person in his life. She supported him unconditionally, and their bond was truly unbreakable, as she instilled the confidence in Kanye that allowed him to pursue his dream of being a rapper and not just a producer. Illustrated best in the late registration track, Hey Mama, a track dedicated to Donda, thanking her for her support and chronicling their relationship. Kanye's life would change forever after this constant stream of success, however, as on November 10th, 2007, just two months after graduation's release, Donda West sadly passed away due to complications following a fight with coronary heart disease after she underwent plastic surgery. Kanye was crushed by this death, and his life would never be the same. To add to this heartbreak, Alex Pfeiffer left Kanye, marking an end to their 18-month engagement and six-year relationship. Not much is known about why she made the decision, but it is known that Kanye was struggling to become accustomed to his newfound stardom, which he had so long desired. Kanye seemed to have outgrown his old, struggling, hard-working producer background, as he was now being recognized for his talents and hard work, alongside being under much more media scrutiny than ever before, changing his music forever. Kanye's next album was 808 and Heartbreak, released on November 24th, 2008, and looking back on it now, it isn't that far from music we've heard from him. But after the Graduation trilogy ran with a relatively consistent sound, this was a huge departure from anything we had heard from Kanye before this. He said himself that his emotions at the time just could not be communicated through rap, as his album had a lot of singing and pop-sounding beats. 
Before this, Kanye would have never considered singing, but with some encouragement from no other than Michael Jackson himself, Kanye was told he could sing and he should on this album, remaining true to himself, making music that was real, just like he stated in the 2002 MTV interview. This album was also one of the first albums to incorporate heavy use of autotune, a stark contrast to the 80s style poppy sounding beats accompanying the singing over the top. What's more impressive is that the album was recorded over a span of just three weeks, with Kanye doing what he does best and bearing all in a public platform for everybody to hear. This album was an honest articulation of the losses Kanye had faced, and the struggles of his newfound stardom, no longer being able to communicate through traditional hip-hop elements. I'm sure it goes without saying, after such a meteoric rise with the Graduation Trilogy, the audience did not expect this album to be anything close to what it was, and they weren't happy. The album performed poorly, as the album did not listen to Kanye West to hear pop music. They expected hip-hop, but Kanye wasn't in a place to create hip-hop. While the sales figures of the album grossly underperformed in the scope of Graduation, the critics were conflicted. Some celebrated the album, with Chris Richards of the Washington Post referring to it as an information age masterpiece, while Andy Gill of The Independent found Kanye's immersion in personal misery uncomfortable and commented that the stylistic tropes quickly became irritating. The album was not a commercial failure by any means, but in the wake of the Graduation Trilogy and the audience criticizing Kanye for abandoning hip hop, it's fair to say it must have felt like one. For the first time, Kanye had not outdone himself, and his experimental new style of production and singing did not receive the accolades that his previous releases had. After pouring himself into this album to a lukewarm reception, Kanye was beginning to adjust to his new life of stardom, but retain the ideals that he held close, perhaps a little too much. Kanye was unapologetic and brutally honest, and now he had nobody to impress. He was accomplished to a degree that he never believed he would achieve, and felt vindicated. This all came to a head in 2009, where Kanye took a bottle of Hennessy to the MTV Video Music Awards known as the VMAs. Taylor Swift won the award for Best Female Video, and Kanye was not happy with the result. In a moment of intoxicated frustration, Kanye stormed the stage, and the now infamous VMAs incident happened, where he took the microphone from Swift during her acceptance speech to let everyone know that he thought the award should have gone to Beyonce. He stated Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time, and was ejected from the event for his actions. After Kanye losing his fiance, mother, public appearance, and possibly even his career, it felt as if he had nothing left. All of America seemed to hate him, so Kanye exiled himself from the country and left for Japan. This is all Kanye has said publicly about his time in Japan, but after the track Never See Me Again was leaked online in 2010, people began to connect the dots to what he may have actually been planning while in Japan. Never See Me Again is a dark track. As the title and lyrics suggest, Kanye didn't seem to plan a return to America. He talks about how, I'd rather live by what I live by than die when I'm fine. I'm gonna stand by myself till my very last breath. Cause you know what, a coward dies a thousand deaths. And how, they want me to hold my head in shame, so I hold them on, holding hands in vain possibly hinting that his apologies made before this track would be in vain if he were to take his own life. Kanye has publicly struggled with his mental health for decades, and this was possibly the worst point of his life, maybe it is still today. He had lost everything, and seemed to be making this song as a last goodbye for his fans. He was honestly communicating his conflicted feelings about his career, his actions, and his feelings towards the industry, even being as blunt to say, aside from this song, life sucks. While you may be thinking this song could simply be a goodbye to his fans as he was quitting music, the piano playing in the background of this track tells a different story. The piano and chord progression sounds eerily similar to the song Futari Dake No Ceremony by Yukiko Okada. Yukiko Okada was a Japanese singer and actress from the 1980s who took her own life after Toru Minegishi expressed no romantic interest in her. Okada was interested in Minegishi, but he said that he thought of her as more of a younger sister. On April 8th, 1986, Okada was found in her apartment with a slashed wrist, and she had filled the apartment with gas as she hid in the closet and cried. She was found by a rescue team and taken to the hospital for treatment, where her manager asked her where she wanted to go, to her parents' home in Nagoya, her apartment, or the office. She asked to be taken to the office, where, when left alone, she made her way to the roof, took off her shoes, and jumped off the building. It may be a coincidence that Kanye sampled Okada, or an interest in her method of taking her own life, 
The latter seems to ring more accurately with the accompanying song as Never Being Seen Again and The Self X Out of Japan. This is as far as the trail goes, however, as the song was thankfully never finished nor released and Kanye has continued his musical endeavors, following this incident with what many consider his best album, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. Interestingly, in one of his most iconic tracks, Power, it's theorized that Kanye may have referenced this incident in his closing lyrics. Kanye has put himself into his music absolutely, and is an artist in every sense of the word. He maintains his integrity and will continue to pioneer in the industries he's active in. His public struggles with his mental health, alongside his honesty and commitment to himself, has produced some of the best music publicly available for listening, and to think it all could have been over long ago. If you're struggling and you feel as if you have nowhere to return, remember there is always hope. Suicide and mental health treatments may be lacking in a lot of places, but there is no shame in asking for that help. While your struggles might seem trivial to you, there is help out there, and I urge you to go out and find it.